I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Deborah Daniels, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. That's right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Well, congratulations on being one of the Teachers of the Year. What's that like? <laughs> it's really exciting. It's, um, I didn't realize it was going to be such a formal event. <laughs> when I first um, heard the news at the school, I was just like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and then it Little sort of got know. bigger. <laughs> So, yeah, it's been really exciting, though. Oh, well, that's good. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us, you know, where you teach and tell us what you teach. Okay. Well, I'm Deborah Daniels. I'm currently teaching Spanish at uh, Foothill High School and leadership. I've recently taken that, um, taken on the duties of the leadership class. And I teach um, basically all different grade levels, teaching Spanish 1. And last year I had Spanish 2 as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. That's about it there. <laughs> well, tell us about the leadership part and what's involved there. Well, the because leadership that seems is, to be something that's really been indoctrinated in the schools. It's really becoming um, a big part of my life as well. <laughs> um, I'm excited about it. It was um, it sort of fell into my lap about halfway through the school year, and we had a little sh a shift in some staffing, and um, the principal asked if I'd be interested in working with the leadership students. And I really didn't, I wasn't able to get too far into it last year only because I was teaching already six classes mm -hmm. and I didn't have a prep period to really get involved. But, um, you know, with getting my feet wet just a little bit, it's really exciting. We're developing a lot of programs for this coming up school year. We've got a lot of excitement planned for the student body and also for the community. We're working on some, um, some pretty fun things to put together so that we could reach out into the community and, and have, um, our community feel proud of our of our community school. Foothills really, uh, I feel like every time you go somewhere in the Foothill community, people are like, oh, I graduated from there. I graduated, yeah. and they love, they love, love, love to be a Mustang. They're Mustangs for life. So, something that I feel is really going to be fun and and exciting for this the community is to have um, some outreach programs so that they can we can get a lot of the parents that have already graduated back into mm. be involved in the school. Well, uh, explain what. The leadership programs are like and what's involved for the students? Well, I'm, like I said, I'm still learning. I'm still pretty new. Um, I'm not exactly sure if I'm completely normal or if I'm just doing things just because I feel like they're going to be fun. But we plan all the dances. We plan all the, all the social events. Mm -hmm. um, and we also plan rallies and we plan fundraisers and things. Um, we have the senior ball or the senior prom and the junior prom and all the, you know, just basically everything social. Um, but something that I'm really trying to push the students towards is being able to be leaders in the community as well, not just leaders in the school. Um, so I'm working with teaching them um, how to lead a group, how to lead a game, how to lead just some basic things like if they're working with younger students. We're also going to be maybe putting together a program that we will have our leadership students coupled with some of the students from the, uh, the Highlands leadership class. We've also, I'm also working with their uh, leadership director, or activities director, to really put um, an emphasis on community involvement and being leaders in the community. Explain why it's important to teach those skills in high school. When else are they going to learn them? Yeah. I mean, really, there's, we're, we're running out of chances to help kids learn things that are, that are going to make them be, be really good citizens things that are going to you know, help them without it being expensive for them. The minute you get out of high school, everything costs you know, thousands of dollars. So the value in public education at the K-12 level is that the more teachers we can, as teachers, we can put so much into what we offer the students as opposed to you know, just giving them reading and just giving them writing and just giving them you know, specific incremental pieces, we want to just push the whole package. If you can be a great reader and a great writer, but also a great thinker and an excellent leader, well then why not? I mean, let's, let's push you to be the best that you can be out of high school rather than wait for you to go to college or wait for you to do something else. We don't have to wait. We can start right now. We've, we've got so much potential. Kids come in at you know, 12, 13, 14 years old coming out of junior high. They're just full of potential and ideas and excitement. And then something happens along the way and they maybe get sidetracked or life gets in the way. And they don't always stay focused on different goals. But something that I'm really adamant about is we have a goal as a group. We have a goal as a school. We want to make sure that we accomplish those goals. So that's what leaders do. They make sure that goals get accomplished. Goals are, you know, whatever the goal is, whether it's building a bench or, or building, a, building a school, we're, we're going to 
put that together and make it happen. Now, are the kids in that program a high, highly motivated group? It's pretty motiva motivated group. Yeah, we did. Um, I did elections. Um, my first elections, <laughs> um, uh, democratic elections. We did. Um, we elected um, our ASB officers and all our class officers, and we're going to do our freshmen in the fall when they come in. We'll have some officers come in from, um, you know, from all our feeder schools. But it's a pretty motivated group of kids. Um, Last year there was a bit of lethargy coming um, as, as me going in just because maybe they've been left unattended for a little too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't leave minors unattended, just, 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 you know, just the right amount. Give them a little bit of freedom but not a complete amount. <laughs> so let's switch gears then. Uh, let's, let's switch to the academic course of like teaching a language. Okay. Uh, you're dealing with uh, kids who need a little bit of motivation. Well, what, do you, what do you do to kind of uh, prod them along a little bit? Well, I make them do a lot of oral participation. They have to read a lot and they have to write a lot. And they, so and because they have to, you know, read a lot, they need to be correct. I need them to use the correct accent and have the right prosody where they're speaking and doing, um, you know, saying that the, basically I'm looking for accent and pronunciation and keeping the, the sentences the right, in the right order. A little bit different from English. But still, punctuation and capitalization and all those things are, are similar, so we're always going to make sure that those are fundamental. Um, but as far as academics go, to keep the kids engaged, I'm really, really busy with a strategy that I use that they speak with mm, almost absolute certainty they're speaking three times in a class period, each student. So they do a lot of talking, and in order to be able to speak properly and, and give me a good answer, they have to practice it. So I get them in the practice. They really have to do their best work in their practice, or they come up, they come up short when the check-in happens and I ask them to read their answer out loud. Mm -hmm. So I always give them a second chance to fix it, but they really do um, buy into the fact that they know they're going to be held accountable to um, a very high standard of, of linguistics and uh, so they, they as, participate. As a language teacher, how are, you going, how are you dealing with the Common Core? I love the Common Core um, only because I've been teaching similar to the Common Core when I used to teach English language development. Um, always they write everything, they read everything, they write everything, then they read everything, they read to a partner and they're able to articulate and explain things. Um, I feel like the Common Core is really just um, a reinforcement of, of the way I've been teaching for quite some time where I, I do have them doing a lot of, they're, essentially it's all listening, writing, reading, and speaking, where they cannot do one without the other. And in many classes, they can just write down a whole bunch of answers and turn it in, and, and they never actually say anything. So the way I've, I've always worked it is they have to speak. You know, we have to hear their voice, even if it's just to answer a couple of questions, but they must speak in a complete sentence, right? And I always require them to write everything down. So I feel like I've been doing the Common Core even sort of, off the cuff, mm -hmm. my ever since I've been teaching. So, how long have you been teaching now? Uh, let's see, ninety-seven. So, do the math. I don't know. I'm not a math teacher. I've Neither are you. You were a, a no, Spanish teacher. No, so. Spanish teacher. So, since about ninety-seven, I did okay. an internship so about at sixteen years or so. Yeah, at um, I started doing. A, I did an internship at um, Grafton Elementary, which is no longer there. It's a nice landing, mm -hmm. cute little community school. I loved it out there. So, what kind of changes have you seen over all that time in education? Has there been one big shift? <laughs> the biggest shift is to downsize, right? <laughs> getting everything down into a very compact package where we're getting the most bang for our buck out of every, every, every individual within the organization. I feel like um, we used to have money for all kinds of extras and, mm -hmm. and paper and field trips and things, and now it's really just a matter of we're bare bones, but we still really, really go to town on the teaching. I feel like it's actually improved my teaching to have limited resources because I really don't have any go-tos. It's a matter of, okay, so how am I going to engage their minds rather than give them a piece of paper or give them something to work with their hands? I really have to start, I've, I've been able to find a lot of different ways to engage students. And I'm always looking for more, so I can't wait to hear all the other teachers with their ideas. <laughs> so what motivated you to be a teacher? Well, um, you know, that's kind of funny. I've, I've wanted to be a teacher since before I was even in school when I would, used to walk my, my big brother up to his class. And I used to watch the teachers. Well, first I wanted to be in school. I wanted to be a student. I was mm -hmm. mad that he got to go first. You know, and I had to stay home and I wanted to go to school. But when I got to um, probably first grade, I just really loved my first grade teacher. 
And I just wanted to do everything just like her. I wanted to mirror everything that Mrs. Blumenthal did and just, I even wanted her big red hair. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I wanted to be a teacher. I just loved how she was and I, I thought it would be a really fun thing to do, but then, lo and behold, it's a really powerful thing to do as well. Well, congratulations to you on being one of the two teachers of the year for Twin Rivers. Oh, thank you. We've been speaking with uh, Deborah Daniels. Congratulations. Thank you so much.